Hey everybody, um, sorry this is kind of late, um, I thought I'd kind of go over the gear that I finished up doing my trek with across the AT. Now some of it I changed out through the, um, while I was out and then some of it I started from the beginning. I'm going to start with my backpack. Um, I started out with the ULA Ohm, um, 2.0 and it worked pretty good for me up until I got up to Parisburg or the James um, not Parisburg but the um, James River footbridge where you go into um, Glasgow but anyway um, right before I got there the um, it had been giving me some trouble the inner support for it the little carbon stay had been giving me some trouble wouldn't stay in place and anyway um, i ended up breaking it and it was putting all weight on one side of my back and causing some back issues so my lovely wife ended up bringing my osprey ether up to me it's a 60. now it worked out great um but the trip i think basically finished it off there's some wear and tear on it now um before I had started, I had cut the extra cords and stuff off of it that I didn't need. I, I'd done that a while ago on another backpacking trip that I'd done. But um, through the trip, it got some wear and tear to it. The bottom of it tore um, where I'd slid down some rocks or fell um, going through the lemon squeeze with it. I'd got a hole in it there. Um, one of the, the zipper pocket stopped the zipping up and i got a hole there and but it held up well now the osprey ether will um i didn't lose nothing out of it and the osprey ether will um hold let you allow you to carry weight that the ula on wood and i mean i could pack 35 pounds in that thing and it not feel like i had a real bad load on my back i mean it carried well so um I'll probably go back with an Osprey if I get another pack or whatever pack that I choose to get, but I think I'm gonna retire this one after the track. Now, my rain cover for the pack, I did go with a Z-Pax um, Cuban fiber one, and it done pretty good. It didn't really fit the Osprey pack all that great, but it done real good. Um, of course, it got its own wear and tear through the trip also um down at the bottom of it where i had slid down a few times um there's some wear in it you can tell where it's starting to um wear down and there's actually some holes in it too i'm gonna see if i can patch it up but um, i've just not had a minute to do it but it held up for the trip but by the end of the trip it was starting to show its um you know show that it had been worn on i'd fell down a couple times and where i got the bottom of the pack it caught the rocks too so that's what caused a lot of the holes in it now i did use the nylofoam bags uh, for bag liners the nylofoam bags they held up well i didn't have a bit of problem um, i did change out the bag when i got my osprey and this is the one that i carried from uh, basically gloss scale um didn't get no holes in it or anything else and i never got wet gear it's because the pack like i say the bag line or the pack cover you know eventually they soak through where water gets around because like i said it didn't fit the pack all that great but using this bag liner i never got wet gear while i was on the trail um during the trek i actually started out with an umbrella and a rain jacket and the umbrella i sent it home um in at noc along with my one of my rain jackets i switched it out because it just wasn't working the foliage was too thick to use the umbrella and everything else so i sent it home and then my rain jacket was not keeping me what i thought should be dry so i switched out to another rain jacket um the first one was a columbia and then i switched to a north face and neither one of them done anything so in hot springs i switched over to a frog togs 
suit that lasted me to Dam well the coat lasted me to damascus the pants la barely lasted me out of town i split the seam out of them um so anyway when i got the damascus it was wore slap out so i carried it a little bit more i duct taped it and carried it a little bit further and then i was like i'm getting tired of this so i switched over to just regular ponchos that you get from dollar general and i tried out different things so anyway i walked with a poncho most of the time um and they work pretty good so when i got up to manchester i ended up getting one of these sea to summit ponchos and that's what i summited with now i don't recommend using that like i say in high winds and everything else because it's just aggravating but and it does soak through after a while but i got better use from a poncho than i did with the rain jackets and it to me i could open it up and it breathed better so that worked very well um i used smart water bottles to carry water in um i did change these out a couple times during the trek um worked perfect um i carried the same cnoc bag through the trek but by the end of it i did get a small hole in the side of it it leaks sometimes but the cnoc bag as I, I did carry extra water in it for extra water carries also so very tickled to death with it um, it served its purpose well and you can tell right there where it's starting to wear and everything down from where um over time and i broke the top of it so it, it's about seen its better days um i started out with the same water filter but up in uh, during the shenandoahs i ended up losing a water filter so one of my good friends she brought me a, another water filter to me um because she's in the area but um anyway i stayed with the sawyer squeeze water filter the bigger one and didn't have a problem out of it now this one needs to be back, back flushed it was slowing down by the last time that i used it i also had one of these valves right here or one of these connectors on the end of it so i could just put my bottle in here i wouldn't squeeze it all or tighten it all the way tight but i put my bottle in there and i could just put it on the bottom of my sea knock and just hold it there hang it on a tree branch and it would just filter the water through so i did use that a lot of course uh toilet paper through and i i just got a whole roll when i'd go in the town and just use it until i needed more um let's see here for my stove and cook kit i just used a small tokes pot um it served me well didn't have no problem my stove held up very well um now by the end of it i had one of these um, little arms is bent I had bent one of the little arms, so um, you'd have to just kind of make sure you um, had it angled right, the pot on it, so your stuff wouldn't leak down. But anyway, the stove served me right. Um, I think this one's being a little bit, but um, I didn't have no problems out of the stove. Um, I lost my lighter halfway through, so that was the second lighter that I had. I got... I got a bunch of these. I mean, I used a bunch of these on my track. Uh, um, I used a handkerchief. Basically, I just wrapped my um, cook kit up in it just to keep it all together. And then I used it as a washcloth and um, used it for a little bit of everything. Um, just whatever I needed through the day or whatever. So I used it for a dish rag and then just try to clean it up you know whenever i'd go in the town and stuff wash it um i used the same um snow peak spork the whole track didn't have a bit of problem out of it it's a little bit shorter but um i ate out of a ziploc bag or out of the packaging so i never did have a problem with it um my food bag it's now it stinks it stinks um but um it served me well um i hung it a bunch i used uh, this um the little rock bag showing somewhere on it where i'd put rocks in it and stuff but it served me well didn't have a bit of problem out of the food bag um 
I need to put me some marks on it so I'll know one day, two day, three day, so I don't overpack it. Um, I carried this with me. I used it a bunch. It looked, that's all I needed. The only knife that I would need. I did carry some Swiss Army knife. Um, it was like fingernail cl clippers, but anyway, I lost them somewhere. So all I got is this right here left. Um, this is my hand sanitizer. I just carried it in a little eyedropper bottle. And when I'd go to town, I'd just find some hand sanitizer somewhere and just refill it. Um, this is the medicine I carried with me in a pill bottle. I just kind of, I had some Pepto, ibuprofen, Tylenol. And then at the end I had got, I bought some vitamin K and calcium pills. Um, well, it was calcium pills with some vitamin K added to it. Just because I thought maybe my, um, every time I'd fall, I'd end up getting a hematoma up underneath my skin. And I thought, well, maybe I'm not getting enough vitamin K in my blood or something like that. So anyway, um, I used this set pad the whole time through. Didn't have no kind of issues out of it. It held up well. Now, this bug net, I, I ended up, when I went switched out some stuff in Glasgow, I got my bug net. I never used it. Um, I probably should have, but I never did just because I, when I put it on, I, I just don't like something over my face. So anyway, I used it as a stuff sack. Um carried my gloves in it. Uh, this was my second roll of duct tape. I used the first roll up. So this was my second little roll of duct tape. Um, some monkey butter here. Of course, toothpaste, toothbrush. Um, and then um, extra pair of socks. Now these are darn toughs, but um, they do have a hole in them. I've got to send them in. Um, it, they got a hole worn in them, but there's little low cut socks. Um, served me well. I had also had some Njinji liners that I used to start out with to kind of help prevent blisters. And um, I ended up sending them home back after I got my those the shoes that was too little for me that I wore thin socks. That's what I wore was the Njinji liners with it until um, I got me a new pair of shoes. And then I just sent everything back home. Um, and then my little repair kit, um, had some Cuban fiber and stuff like that in it. So didn't have no kind of issues. I had a little sewing kit that I bought in Georgia and I used it all the way up to Maine just so I could sew stuff up and everything. Um, my inReach mini, it worked fine. Didn't have a bit of problems or issues. I was able to message with it and do everything that I needed. So I'm very satisfied with it. Um, I got this in Franklin, my headband. I sent my merino wool one home and just kept this one. This one worked very wonderful. I'm satisfied with it. When I got up to New Hampshire and Maine, I used uh, bug spray a lot. Maine, the only this is the only thing that would keep the mosquitoes kind of from biting you. The rest of it they thought was candy. I carried this with me. My wife had got it for me before I got left. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9, one of my favorite scriptures and it's got a compass in it. So I carried that from Georgia to Maine. Um, I lost, I had some anchor um, earbuds and I ended up losing them around um standing indian somewhere around through there i don't know what happened to them so anyway at the first dollar general i come to i bought some of these as little cheap ten dollar earbuds they lasted me all the way to shawls and then it had rained really hard a couple of days before i got to shawls and they got wet and they would not recharge. The battery won't recharge in them or anything. So I just used them, you know, until the batteries went dead in both of them. And then I couldn't reach, I could recharge off the battery in it, but I can't charge the battery. It wouldn't let me do it. It all got soaking wet. So they don't work no more, but they lasted me basically my whole trip. My trekking poles, I started out with the leaky poles and I had these little um, magnetic things, uh, one connected to my pack and the other connected to my poles and they worked wonderful I, I really they rusted during the trip but um they worked good 
Well, right before getting into um, Monson, um, I was trying to cross a river that was a little bit strong a current and ended up losing one of them. I couldn't catch it going down the river. So anyway, so I've got, and I ended up changing the tips because the tips wore down in Pennsylvania. I warped this one. Um, anyway, um, they served me well. I really like these poles. and I'll probably, if I ever get me another set of poles, I'll get these same type. Um, I really liked these poles, but Monson in the hiker box, they had one of these Ozark Trail um, carbon one, and it's, I ended up warping the tip on it, but um, it lasted me the whole trip, uh, the rest of the trip, so I can't complain on it. Um, clothing, some of the clothing, I did buy a fleece when I was at the hiker hostel walk-in hostel or something right when I entered into the whites, right before I entered into the whites. Um, they had this for sale. I bought it because I knew my rain gear. The, I knew this would absorb some water. And the puffy, I switched out my synthetic puffy back in Gloucester, or let's see, Parisburg. I switched it out one time when my wife come in. For my lighter down, it was an Eddie Bauer 650 down. And it served me well, that 650 down jacket served me well. The only problem is it wouldn't keep you warm if you was wet. So when I got up in the whites, or close to the whites, I knew the weather probably would be bad. And it was going across Fraconia Ridge. And I didn't have a rain coat. All I had was that poncho. So I bought this and basically wore it underneath my um, poncho when I was going across Fraconia Ridge. Because it absorbed a lot of the water, but it still kept me warm. Um... I love this thing. It's comfortable. It's it's real soft. I'll, if I ever go on another hiking trip, I'll take it with me. Now, it's three times too big for me now. It's a extra large. But um, anyway, it it works. I'll, I'll take it again on another trip. Also, I started out with these. They was just REI Long Johns. Um, I got the shirt and the pants combo. I started out with them, and then in Parisburg, I um, switched out to a lighter uh, pair that I had got from Academy Sports a couple years ago. It was just lightweight. I used the lightweight ones up until I got to right before the whites. Right before the whites, I had my wife send me a box when I got my shoes that I've been waiting on. She sent me my shoes and she sent me these back because I figured I'd need the warmth and I'm glad that I did because it did work out, you know, to my advantage getting them back. So that was good. Now I carried my thermo rest through the whole thing of it. It was a large. Um I floated on it. Um I let some of the other hikers borrow it when their inflatable um sleeping pads would pop. But this one lasted me, a, this one done good. I, I can't say nothing bad about it. It might be a little bit heavy, but by golly, it done its job. And I'd sleep in it. I'd sleep on it in the shelters. Um, if it was going to be real cold at night or windy or something other, I would inflate it and sleep on it in my hammock in addition to my underquilt. Um, reasoning for that... I had started out with a zero degree under quilt and a 20 degree top quilt. Um, in Parisburg, I switched over to both 40 degree top quilt and 40 degree under quilt. Now the weather didn't start really warming up. Remember we had a, the weather didn't start getting really warm till almost June it seemed like. So some nights it was still in the higher elevations was still getting cooler. So, um, if I was in my hammock, I would put my under quilt up underneath of me and blow this up and then use the 40 degree. And, I stay, and I'd put on an extra layer if I'd need to. If I was staying in the shelter and it was going to be cooler, I'd done this in the whites. I'd just take my 40 degree under quilt and then put it inside of my 40 degree top quilt and just double the down. And it worked just fine. I didn't have no issues staying. And if my clothes was wet, I'd use both of them together so I could get my clothes dried by the next morning so I wouldn't have to put on wet clothes. Now, if I was in my hammock and didn't have to, I'd roll this, if I didn't need it for insulation, I would roll this up and I took this little um, Cuban fiber stuff sack with me. Now it's about wore out. It's got some holes in it and stuff, but I would use it as my pillow 
in the hammock. If I was in the shelter and was sleeping on my pad, I would fill this with whatever clothes or stuff that I had to make it kind of firm and I would sleep on it and use that as my pillow. Never did have a problem. Like I might, would, I'd stuff my, if I was in the shelter, I could stuff this in there and along with some other stuff and it would just make a pillow out of it. Um, my Cuban fiber tarp done real well. I never got wet when I was in my hammock. I never got wet. Um, it done very fine. I'm very pleased with the way it is. The only thing that I would change on this is I would stick with the snake skins the next time. Um, I did do this, just use a Cuban fiber bishop bag to, um, just to kind of lighten it up everything. Cause when you're using an Osprey and I tried, what I tried to do was go as light as I could on everything that I could get. And then, um, it would kind of make my, my weight lighter on my back. So anyway, I went as, cause, um, that was just my thinking. So next time I would go back to the snake skins on it. It'd be a whole lot easier. But this setup did work fine. I didn't have no issues with it. Now the bishop bag has got some holes in it and got some wear. You can see where it's peeling and everything else. So I'll end up having to go back to my snake skins and stuff. And I got that from Z-Packs. Like I say, it really held up. Now my hammock... Um, I do have a couple little holes in the bug net. I started out with the winter cover for the hammock. Um, once I got to Parisburg, I switched out the winter cover for the bug net. It um, has got some little holes in it, but it held up well. It's the chameleon hammock. Now, I didn't use the elastic out ties for it to, you know, really stretch it out. I just slept in it like it was. You could sleep diagonal. Um no kind of issues with it. Um, I would go with the same setup again if I had it do all over again. Um, I only had to go to the ground um, two times on my trek. Now, I do recommend carrying some extra um, tent stakes with you for that. I didn't start out with enough, but I ended up, I had Amanda, she sent me two, and then I had found one, and it was just enough so I could set up my hammock on the ground, or set up my... Um, thermo rest and then put my tarp over top of me my hammock also um at night time if it was real buggy in the shelters i'd lay my thermo rest out and then on top of my thermo rest i'd just put my hammock laid on top of it and i'd put my and basically i would sleep inside my hammock on top of my thermo rest just to keep the bugs off of me and stuff if you know i had to sleep in the shelter if they wasn't a good place for trees my straps, I had started out with whoopee slings, but with the cold weather and stuff, it was really aggravating trying to get them adjusted and stuff. So, um, Amanda had met us in, uh, new, at the end of Davenport Gap. So at the end of that, I just, no, at NOC, I'm sorry, NOC, she met me at NOC and, um, I switched out the whoopee slings for, um, just my regular straps. It was a whole lot easier to deal with. My underquilt, like I say, I started with a zero degree underquilt and a 20 degree top quilt. And then um, I ended carrying the 40 degree top and 40 degree under. Um, here's my bound down jacket. It's It kept me warm through the track. Um, didn't have no kind of issues or nothing like that, except for, you know, it's not going to keep you warm if it's wet. So I probably should have kept my synthetic, but I was just trying to lighten my load as much as I could. Um, I had hookahs throughout, hookahs throughout the whole trip, but um, by the end, I blowed out the side of the hookahs, and my inserts that I had got before I left had just worn out. So when I got the shawls, I, all they had was 14s in um, the Ultras, so I just switched to Ultra, Olympus 4s and then what they had and then I got some of the um super feet now first starting out with them they did hurt my feet um but eventually after a couple days of wearing them I was a I tolerated them fine so that's what I ended up with as far as my electronics was concerned I carried everything in this little um small cuban fiber bag it worked out very well um i had this um 
night core light it worked well i can't say nothing i mean it never failed me or anything and it's still working it done great um i had a bigger plug-in but it didn't um charge no faster than this one so i just switched it out when i got to the noc um for a smaller one but it it done fine i also carried a rapid charger for my phone um through the whole track well, i used the samsung phone and the rapid charger now i ended up i had usb c and then the usb um a couple other usb cords that i carried um i ended up having to switch cords out different times throughout the track because they just quit working or they'd get bites in them or something like that so anyway i did switch out cords through the track now my i had an anchor 20k battery thing now it was more than enough to do what i needed to the only thing i've got a qualm about it is the rapid charger don't work on it anymore now this is where you charge that and then it was supposed to rapid charge your phone off of it it quit working um on the same day that everything got wet from the my um earphones and stuff got wet it quit working after that but now everything else charges just fine no kind of issues so um that was more than enough battery bank that that i needed um i also had the inreach mini 2 um didn't have no problems out of it it tracked just fine and i had the samsung s20 plus um as far as a phone it took pictures fine with no kind of issues um this is just a quick review of the gear that i had in my pack um like i say what i took it worked for me i don't didn't, don't have no kind of qualms about it um the only thing that i'd probably change is i'd probably just kept my synthetic instead of sending it home and switching out to the down just because it would have kept me warmer and um my i don't know exactly as far as rain gear i mean rain just sucks um i, I don't know looking into anything else i don't know if i'd have done any i mean the poncho done very well um for me but now it would soak through like everything else would um i think my gear worked out fine i didn't have no kind of qualms or anything like that um so i might would try on my next trek as i might would try just doing the ultra olympus um if i was to do it again instead of the hokas the hokas they done good they had a lot more cushioning to them um but the soles would wear out quick i got 500 out of a couple pairs in some of them they didn't do good on rocks and they didn't have as much traction as what the olympus seemed to have um other than that basically i don't think i'd change anything um i think everything done what it was supposed to do thanks for watching